Due to the lack of maintenance they receive from the average boat owner, I often refer to bilge pumps as the Rodney Dangerfield of boat equipment, meaning they just don't get no respect. It's a funny but also troubling statement, particularly as bilge pumps are often a boat owner's first and only line of defense against sinking. Uh, to prevent you from being that proverbial scared sailor with a bucket, here's a look at bilge pump basics, from what they do to selection, installation, and maintenance. First off, what they are and what they aren't. Uh, don't confuse your bilge pump with an emergency pump, which provides much greater dewatering capacity. That being said, although their primary job is clearing incidental water from the bilges, uh, packing gland drips, rainwater, etc., bilge pumps can provide crucial extra time when taking on water, allowing you to find the source of a leak, uh, don life jackets, or hopefully keep your boat afloat long enough for help to arrive. Uh, the most common types of bilge pumps, and the primary focus of this article, are centrifugal and diaphragm electric pumps. Centrifugal pumps move water by kinetic energy using a rotating solid impeller, similar in design to a turbine. Water enters the pump, picks up speed as the impeller rotates, and is then forced out by its own momentum. Centrifugal pumps are submersible, but not self-priming meaning they must be sitting in water in order to pump it. Uh, centrifugal pumps are relatively inexpensive and can move a lot of water. Other advantages include low maintenance, excellent reliability, and the ability to pass small amounts of debris while clogging. They can also be ran dry for extended periods of time without damage, although they will eventually quit to the bearing failure if forced to do so. Uh, disadvantages include their inability to self-prime, and their loss of effectiveness, the farther they have to push water vertically. Uh, a diaphragm pump acts like a little wet vac to suck out bilge water. Uh, water is poured in through an intake valve and then pushed out through an output valve. Diaphragm pumps are self-priming, meaning they can develop suction and prime themselves when dry, uh, can be ran dry without damage, and are better able to push water uphill than centrifugal pumps. As to downsides, they can't move as much water as a comparable centrifugal pump, and most can't tolerate even small particles of trash or debris, which can lodge in the pump's valves, causing leaks or failure. Now that you know how different bilge pumps work, next up is determining how many your boat should have. The first thing to understand when shopping for a bilge pump is that just because a pump is ready to pump uh, 1,000 GPH or gallons per hour, that doesn't mean it will. Uh, several factors affect pumping capacity, and while a manufacturer may be able to massage a 1,000 gallons per hour from said pump without a discharge hose and under perfect conditions in a lab, the real world is another matter. On most boats, water has to be pumped up before it can be pumped out, and that's a critical factor. The distance of vertical travel, called static head by the guys in the lab coats, uh, can decrease a pump's rated performance by as much as 75%. Just two feet of static head will cut the output of a centrifugal pump by half. And depending on its size, 15 to 20 feet might neutralize the pump altogether. Sailboats make things even more complicated. While a pump in the keel sump may have to lift water only five feet when the boat is level, healing can increase that distance by three feet or more. Uh, other factors degrading pump performance include bends and restrictions in the discharge hose, as well as hose size and interior surface. Small hoses with ribbed insides being the worst. So how much pumping capacity should your boat have? It's a good question, but one with no clear or easy answer, mainly because boats are so different. Any compartment that's essentially watertight, uh, in other words, where water can't drain into another, uh, should have its own bilge pump or two. While ABYC, uh, the American Boat and Yacht Council, has not set requirements concerning bilge pump capacity, the American Bureau of Shipping recommends one 24 gallons per minute pump, that's about 1,440 gallons per hour, and one 12 gallons per minute pump uh, for boats under 65 feet. The Lloyd standard uh, relates to vessel length and volume, recommending a 50 gallons per minute pump for a boat of about 50 feet. To me, it's simply a case of bigger is better. Within reason, of course, uh, based on size alone, I'd recommend a minimum of 5,500 uh, GPH electrical pumping capacity for a 40-foot vessel.
divided among a 1,500 GPH primary pump and two 2,000 GPH backup pumps. I'd also throw in a high volume manual pump in the mix for good measure. Uh, general installation considerations. After determining the type and number of bilge pumps you need, the next step is making sure they're installed correctly and properly maintained. The first step on the path to bilge pump nirvana is making sure your boat's bilge is clean and free of trash and debris. Routine bilge cleaning is a fact of life uh, for older boats, but even that new boat you're purchasing can have a bilge littered with pump clogging bits of construction material, such as wood shavings, bits of fiberglass, and gobs of epoxy. Oily bilge residues should also be cleaned up and disposed of properly. In addition to the ecological concerns of accidentally pumping it overboard, oil combines with dirt to form a gooey sludge that can clog pumps and prevent float switches from operating properly. Uh, use marine grade hose for pump discharge runs and secure them at each end with marine grade stainless steel hose clamps. Hoses should be routed as directly as possible to their discharge through hull and should also be properly supported uh, approximately every 18 inches to prevent chafe and excessive movement. Speaking of discharge through hulls, they should all be situated well above the waterline to prevent water from siphoning back into the bilge. Siphon brakes and riser loops are also recommended and should reach at least 18 inches above static waterline where possible. Automatic flow switches, if installed, must be securely mounted and installed clear of wires, hoses, and other obstructions that can impede operation of the floating arm or flapper type switch. If you have a floating arm or flapper type switch, you want to orientate it fore and aft with the flapper pointed towards the stern. This is especially important on power boats. Uh, during jackrabbit takeoffs, surging bilge water can damage the flapper mechanism. Installing them close to a bulkhead or frame also helps protect the switch from a torrent of water. Enclosed switches eliminate this worry, but they can be difficult to inspect and test. Um, regardless of the type you choose, make sure that each pump has a manual switch as well as any automatic float switches. None of the automatic systems are fail-safe, and you want to be able to turn your pump on should one of them fail. Power requirements. Uh, ABYC standards recommend providing circuit protection for each bilge pump. You can do this by powering them through the main breaker or a fuse panel, but then you'll have the potential problem of someone inadvertently killing power to the pumps by throwing the main breaker. To prevent this, some advocate wiring each pump through a dedicated fuse to the all or hot terminal of the battery switch, the one that's always energized, or even directly to the battery itself. The switch is a better option of the two as it's generally poor practice to wire equipment directly to the battery. Uh, the battery switch option also ensures that the pump can uh, drain power from both batteries rather than limiting them to one battery. Uh, an even better option is installing a small dedicated bilge pump breaker panel, which has the added benefit of keeping all bilge pump fuses and breakers together and easily accessible. This panel would then be wired directly to the battery switch, bypassing the main circuit breaker. You could even go so far as to install a plexiglass cover for this panel and stencil bilge pumps do not turn off on it. Uh, when wiring your bilge pump, ensure all electrical connections are located well above normal bilge water levels to reduce corrosion issues and properly terminate them with marine grade connectors. Leave those wire nuts and electrical tape joints at home. Uh, maintenance tips. Uh, problems with centrifugal pumps typically involve uh, clogging, defective automatic float switches if installed, or corroded electrical connections, a common problem with any electrical gear installed in the corrosive environment of a vessel's bilge. Uh, maintenance is generally limited to cleaning the strainer. Centrifugal pumps have one built into the base and waterproofing of all connectors. When it comes to repair, with the exception of larger rebuildable units, most centrifugal pumps are so inexpensive that it usually costs less to replace a damaged pump than to repair it. Maintenance and repair of diaphragm pumps typically involves opening up the pump body, clearing the pump chamber of debris, and checking the diaphragm and valves for damage or deterioration. Other than clogging, most problems will be caused by torn or damaged check valves. The diaphragms can also fail. However, they are typically uh, pretty robust and will outlast several valve changes. Pump disassembly for maintenance is normally straightforward. 
However, some are more complex than others, multi-chambered units, for example. So be sure to read all instructions carefully to avoid common mistakes, such as improper orientation of check valves during uh, reassembly of the pump. In addition to your actual bilge pumps, you can also add some bling to your bilge pumping system with these must-have accessories. One of the most important safety upgrades a boater can make is the installation of a high-water bilge alarm. Uh, bilge alarms can be installed as a standalone system, uh, i.e. an alarm and a dedicated float switch, uh, as an add-on to an existing primary or backup bilge pump and automatic float switch, or as part of that new backup bilge pump installation you've been putting off. My preference is to have a dedicated float switch separate from the primary bilge pump, which ensures the bilge alarm will sound even if the automatic float switch for the primary pump fails. Bilge alarms can also be configured to uh, operate both audible and visual alarms, sirens, strobes, and the like. The goal being to get attention, whether tied at the dock or roaring along at full speed. Another must-have upgrade is installation of a visual bilge pump on light for each pump at each helm position. As your bilge pump, uh, if properly configured, will turn on before your bilge alarm, this gives you even more of a heads up that something's not right in the bilge water department. Uh, finally, a bilge pump on and off counter is also desirable to indicate how often the bilge pumps are cycling. What this does is make a leak more noticeable. In other words, you set the counter and then you leave and come back, you know, the next weekend or whatever. You can see exactly how many times the bilge pump is cycling. Again, which indicates that, you know, hey, there's probably a leak or something. Finally, we're going to talk about some bilge pump tips and good practices. Uh, tip one. Test and verify operation of all bilge pump systems at regular intervals, uh, quarterly at a minimum. Uh, testing should verify the actual pumping of water overboard rather than, in the case of electric pumps, just switching the pump on and listening for motor noise. Uh, tip two, make sure all bilge pumps not only have intake strainers or strum boxes installed, but that they can be easily reached and cleared of debris. As a marine surveyor, I often see centrifugal style pumps mounted beneath engines and completely inaccessible, even to simply clean the strainer. If your boat has a similarly inaccessible pump, uh, relocate them for better access. Tip three, disassemble and inspect pumps periodically for worn or damaged components, paying particular attention to neoprene or other soft parts such as diaphragms and check valves. Uh, this is not only good preventative maintenance, but it also lets you learn the in and outs of disassembling and reassembling uh, your bilge pumps before an emergency occurs. Uh, tip four, list your bilge pump types, location, and size for future reference and make sure they are extra spares on board or complete rebuild kits for each. If you really want to go the extra mile, pack a complete spare bilge pump assembly. Uh, being able to swap out a defective pump lets you quickly bring the system back up while giving you the option of repairing the damaged pump later at your convenience. Finally, my personal recommendation is uh, regular inspection of the bilge pumps should be included in your vessel's overall preventive maintenance program. The goal of this being to find and replace worn or damaged components before they fail.